So today it is the beginning of week number three for Christmas in July. So welcome and what we're going to do in this particular post, blog post, which by the way, if you're not at howtogetcreative.com, if you're watching this on YouTube, you need to go over to howtogetcreative.com because there's cool things happening over there. So what we're going to do is this today. We're going to get ready in order to do make these cool ornaments these fun little ornaments they're kind of doodly and fun they're little christmas ornaments or they could be used as gift tags you know to put on packages and so forth we're going to do these on friday on the live stream but in order to do these you have to have the background and so i'm going to show you real quickly how to make the background for this and this is made of cardstock and it's two pieces of cardstock put together and they're done on the jelly plate so I have my 8x10 jelly plate here my hands are all painty because I've been painting this morning but my skin has been protected by gloves and a bottle so this is a shielding lotion there are several different shielding lotions out there this is the one that I tend to use because it's because it's not greasy and I can use it on my skin whether I'm working with fabric or paint or jelly plate or paper or what have you. So, all right, to start with, I'm going to use my eight by 10 jelly plate. I'm using 110 pound cardstock. You could use the lighter weight cardstock as well if that, if that is what you have access to. The 110 pound just makes it a little bit heavier, obviously, and a little more sturdy for your um, your ornaments or your gift tags. So I'm just working with a collection of different yellows and metallics and gold and bronze and some white. And that is just whatever I feel like putting on the plate. <coughs> so I'm putting on a nice even coat. This is a Goldilocks layer of coat, layer of paint. A Goldilocks coat of paint, which means not too heavy, not too thin. You want enough that it will cover your plate but you don't want it so heavy that it's dripping down the sides now over to my right over here i have a big pad of mixed media paper the canson mixed media paper and so every time i'm have paint on the brayer i'm going to clean it off on that on this tablet and sometimes if I use a stencil or a texturizing tool of some kind, I'll be cleaning it off on this as well. So back to the plate. So it's here, and on this first layer, all I want is texture and color. So this is a Martha Stewart striping tool. So I'm going to use that, and I'm cleaning that off on the pad, and then I might use this thing, which is a hot plate hot pad holder kind of thing to protect your surface and then I'll just clean that off on my pad as well. Alright, that's all I need to do on that and then I'm going to pull the print. So put down a piece of cardstock, rub over the surface and pull the print. So the first layer all I'm after is getting color down. I'm trying to get a pretty even coat of color if possible with some texture on it so that's what we're after and you can see the lines from the different um, the texture tool you can see some of the the little honeycomb pattern that's coming through from that hot pad silicone hot pad thing all right let's do one more so I'm going to do another coat Maybe, this, maybe the same colors, maybe not, but it's impossible to duplicate the same thing. No matter how much you try, you just don't get the same exact effect because you don't get the same amount of paint and all of that. I mean, it's just it's impossible to make them twice. That's why the thing is called a mono printing surface because you do get, in fact, a print out of it. Even if you pull a second print from the plate, you're still only able to duplicate that print one time, hence, hence the name mono print. Now, some people like to work with the plate in just a mono printing 
kind of way, I tend to do layered mono prints. And you'll see what I mean by that. So this is a catalyst texture tool that I'm using here and cleaning it off on my tablet. And then I'm just going to pull that just the way it is. I'm not going to do anything else to it. So different piece of cardstock and pull the print. Pull it up, and then you've got color and some texture going on. You can see the subtle lines there. Now, there's enough here that I might be able to get another print. We'll see. This time, I want to run over it with the brayer, put a little bit more pressure on it. Yeah, so I got another print. So that's great. So I've got three backgrounds going on right here. This is the first one, that's the second one, that's the third one that I pulled. So now we're going to go back to the first one. So this time I'm going to attempt to get myself some different colors than I had the first time. Now that doesn't, I generally will keep at least one color the same and then add in different colors after that. So this is a basics gold, and then perhaps we'll put a little bit of white in with it. Just a little bit, and see what color we come up with. And that's not quite as much contrast, so I'll put a little bit more of the, see that is Cad Yellow by Americana. So, you know, sometimes you get the color exactly the way you want, sometimes you don't. Okay. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to texture this layer again using one of the tools. And then maybe I'll texture it going the other way with another tool. This is also a catalyst tool that usually comes on a big long handle and um, I take the handle off so it just ends up being like a brush I take the handle off because it's so much easier for me to work with now this is a stencil that I cut from Tyvek so you can get Tyvek envelopes or this is construction Tyvek and I cut all those stars out of there using a craft knife so I could have the stars and I could also have the stencil. So this is the first print that I did. So I'm going to go down on top of that. This time what's going to happen is all I'm going to get is the uh, color coming through the holes in the stencil. So that's what I'm after. Get the holes in the stencil in the shape of the stars coming through. So you can see the stars beginning to show up. Now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to brayer this off on my pad to clean it a little bit. The thing about using Tyvek that's great versus using cardstock or paper is that, that it is indestructible. I mean you cannot tear the stuff and so you can just use it over and over and over which is really nice. So that was what was left on the plate. So that makes a great sheet for the back of these because you need two sides. You need the one with the stars on it and then you need whatever's on the back. There's no, I mean, you can make two good sides if you want, but you know, there's not really a whole lot of need. Okay, so let's go to, I'm gonna use some Emperor's Gold this time. Whoop, that was a lot of Emperor's Gold this time. Let's just work with that because I think that might be plenty of paint. Okay, again, we're going to texture texture it so that I get some texture in whatever I put down. Now I'm going to get some texture going on, not just color. 
And let's do, let's see, this isn't dry enough. We'll go to this one. Let's use the stencil again. So this is another one of the prints that I pulled. We should get some good contrast this time. And so you'll see even more of the design of the stars because you'll have more contrast, which is great. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So pull off your stencil. Clean it off a little bit. And I usually work pretty quickly when I'm working with my jelly plate because I'm trying to keep this wet the whole time. I'm trying to keep this wet. So this is another piece. I'm just going to see if I can pull this up. If it gets too dry on me, then I have to do a cleanup print, which means you got to put a thin paint on top of this to get it to activate the dried paint on the plate to pull it up. And I would rather just keep going. Okay, so that will make a great background. All right, so the next thing, I'm going to move to some other prints that I have going on. So these are the two that we just did using the stencil. Okay, so we have this one and this one. One's more, more pronounced than the other, which is the cool part about jelly plate printing. All right, so let's go to another piece that I already have ready here. This one. Okay, so same thing. I've got the stencil layer on here and that's it. So now let's go to, I'm gonna use some bronze. Now you don't have to go progressively darker each time. You can go, you know, using all different, any different kind progression of um, color that you wish. But the key is, for me, is contrast. So I'm trying to have contrast of color and this one looks like it's going to be a little dark so I'm going to sprinkle in some white and I might put in a little bit of this primary yellow which is a little lighter color and see if we can lighten that up a little bit because I'm after contrast I don't want everything to be the same color if it's all the same color you can't see the stars Alrighty. Now I'm going to put down the masks. So these are the stars that I cut out of the Tyvek and then also I have a few stars here that are cut that were die cut from so you know I had just a die that I used with my big kick or big shot or whatever the one is I have manual die cutting machine so I'm just gonna put stars all over here and I have a whole bunch of them because I cut a bunch of them out to make that stencil so I'm just dropping them on here and wherever they land is wherever they land and then if I want to I can put in a little bit of texture as well so we'll do Again, working pretty quickly so that things don't dry on me so that I can actually get the print to come up. So here is what I'm going to work with. I'm going to put it down on top of this. And what's going to happen now is that the stars that are on there now are protecting whatever is on, on my cardstock. So those stars are masking out whatever is on the cardstock and so I'm picking up picking up the background around the stars okay so do you see what we got going on here so some of the original stars from the first layer you can see right in here and right in here they start peeking through in various places so they have been masked out by these shapes that I put on that are laying on the plate right now. Yeah? Pretty cool, huh? Now you can pull the stars off if you want to. You can brayer those off on your piece of uh, Canson Mixed Media or whatever it is that you're cleaning your brayer on. 
I just pull them off and turn them right side up because if you don't turn them right side up they will stick to whatever they're sticking they're laid on they'll also stick to each other and I use this retractable craft tool to just gently very very gently help me pick up the remaining stars if I can't get a hold of them from the edge if you have fingernails you can use fingernails to do it I played the piano for many years and so I never had long fingernails and I probably never will because I can't stand them so I keep them cut really short okay now on here there is a bunch of stars so I'm just gonna see if by some chance I can pull that up so I'm gonna use what's here and see if I can pull this up I'm gonna use my brayer Like I said, if you work quickly enough, usually you can get a lot of things off the plate. So there you can see some of the stars have pulled up. Some of those designs. That's a very cool print. I like that a lot. All right, there's still there's lots of goodness on this, and that's fine. So let me go to another print that has had another layer of paint on it. Um, let's see maybe we'll go to this one okay so this has had some layers on it so let's do it again let's do it again let's go with a couple of colors of again we're after contrast so what I've got on there is kind of the brown yellow kind of tone and so I'm going to come on and stay a little bit light on this layer for that one and I might even let's go to some golds yeah let's go to the liquid liquitex basics let's put a little bit of that and we'll see what we get there but you never want to have so much paint on the plate you'll know well let me say it this way you'll know you have too much on the plate if it's dripping down the sides that's how you know that your layer of paint is too much so I'm gonna go back to my masks and I'm gonna put them back on anywhere any way that they want to any way that they want to drop down on the plate I try not to let them overlap each other you know because that kind of defeats the purpose of the whole the whole thing and the easy ones it's really easy to pull them off the plate if you have some hanging off the edge then you can get them back up off the plate which is cool okay so let's say that's good and I'm gonna use a piece of punchinella and I'm just gonna go over the top just to give it a little bit of texture going on okay so I'm gonna come to this print here see if we can get it to show up here. I'm going to use my brayer. Yeah, that's cool. So I've got more stars. Now these are very subtle in the background showing up because of, the, of what the background was to start with on this. But what I'm seeing and what I hope you're seeing as well is you should see stars in the background and stars on the foreground and sometimes there's stars on top of stars and that's what you're after for this particular technique that's what you're after so I'm going to pull this off one more time and I don't know that we're going to be able to get anything off of this but no you never know Now to clean this plate off, if you let this layer dry, and you can use a hair dryer set on the cool setting or the low setting to dry the paint on the plate, then you can put a coat of, um, I use craft acrylic paint usually, on that and let that paint soften all this up and then it will allow you to pull that, pull up most of this paint and then you can finish cleaning it with your baby wipe or water spray water on it and paper towel 
And if you don't care about cleaning the plate, then you don't have to. But for me, I like the plate to be clean when I'm going to the next thing. Okay, so I got very little, and you can see how the plate is still pretty cruddy, right? Pretty cruddy. And so then I will have to go back and, and I'm gonna let this dry and then come back with maybe some white paint and then I'll pull all the rest of that off. So that's what we're gonna, the way I'm gonna stop and what I want you to do if you wanna work along with me on Friday on the live stream, which is at two o'clock Eastern time and you'll find the link below in the description. What you wanna do is you want to do your prints. So you wanna have some jelly printed stars if you wanna do stars. And then you need to take two pieces. So let's say we're gonna use, although this one, yeah, this one's not quite what I would call done. Let me see if I can find one that might be kinda done. Mm -hmm. Well, this one is pretty close to done. So let's say you wanna use this one. I would actually add another layer to it to, to this. And let's say I want to use this one for the back side. Okay, so I'm going to have two pieces. Then you want to get some kind of pressure sensitive heat activated glue like Steam -a Seam 2 or Wonder Under or Heat and Bond or Misty Fuse, any of those fusible webs. And you want to put that between the two layers of your cardstock, your printed cardstock. So I cut it just slightly shorter and slightly narrower than my cardstock measures. Put it between the two, sandwich it between layers of parchment paper, and use an iron and iron it so that it melts that glue and sticks those together. I find that works a whole lot better, more effectively than if I try to use a wet glue. The wet glue I find tries to make things warp and you know it's not nice and flat and I don't care for that at all. So personally that's what I like to use is the, the fusible webs. Now if you're using an iron, which you have to use when you do the fusible web, your iron surface is inevitably gonna get cruddy looking on the bottom. So one of the best things you can get, this is a tip for you, is to get some faultless hot iron cleaner so you can clean the bottom of that iron. Cause even though you're really careful and you've used parchment on the both sides of your two pieces of cardstock you're sticking together, you will still crud up the bottom of your iron. So anyway, remember to get creative today. It's easy and I'll see you soon.